Hello, and welcome back to the studio for what was going to be another unboxing, but has morphed into a more wide-ranging video. I will explain in a moment. I'm Dr. Wigo, and what I was going to do today was unbox and set up an M.2 SSD drive enclosure so I can move stuff to my Mac, back and forth from my Mac to my PC. I'm going to start the story, and it's it rambles. If all you care about is seeing these things and what they can do, well, skip to the next chapter and I'll start unboxing these things. And then skip to the chapter after that for the performance results, which is probably what you're really interested in. Because I know that's what I became interested in after I unboxed the first one. Let me explain. So I mentioned in a previous video that I had to upgrade a SSD in my editing PC. I needed more room, so I went with the four terabyte. So I got a four terabyte Gen 4 SSD, and then I had this old Gen 3, I now realize did not come out of my current PC. It actually came out of my previous PC. So this is a few years old, so it's a Gen 3, and it's not very fast, as I discovered, which is going to lead me into all this. I unboxed the thing. I, by the way, I will show you that unboxing and setting this up. But once I got it set up and I went to use it, it was pretty damn slow. I was, I was very disappointed. And of course, I blamed the, the enclosure. I was wrong. You'll see, it's all going to turn out well for me in the end. So I bought another, I ordered another enclosure from Amazon, a Casus. So I had the Orico, which I got because the Acasis in all of its descriptions and everything, it never uses the word Thunderbolt. It talks about speeds and USB 3, and blah, 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 but it never says Thunderbolt until I noticed that it says right here, Thunderbolt 4 cable included. Okay, that wasn't on the Amazon page. So I ordered this one. Like I said, this one didn't go well. Again, not for the reasons I thought. So I ordered another enclosure. And then I started doing a little more research and looking around. You know, the research I probably should have done before I started this whole project, but yeah, you know me, I just dive in. And I realized, well, it's possibly the drive. I also had problem. I couldn't get the, the PC wouldn't recognize this enclosure. I don't know why, and it does now. So, uh. so but as I'm fooling around, I realize, well, maybe it's not the enclosure. So I already had the Acasis, uh thing on order. So I ordered the Crucial P3 2 terabyte Gen 4 SSD, which allegedly which has rated speeds up to 3,500 read 3,000 write. So I said, well, that's pretty good. But then, no, oh, it never ends. I'm watching a Linus Tech Tips video, and he's singing the praises of the little cheap Orico enclo SSD enclosure. Now, it doesn't have all the smarts in it to be USB 3 and, 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 and Thunderbolt 3 and all that kind of stuff. In fact, this one's like 20 bucks. But I figured, well, for another 20 bucks, I might as well call, get that. And, or, and so, I, so, so I ordered one of these. So now I have all sorts of stuff coming from Amazon. But wait. Then I was looking and I'm going, well, wait, 3,500? That's not all that fast. And if I really want to test these things, I need to get an even faster SSD. So I ordered the Samsung 990 Pro, which has speeds up to 7450 on read and 6900 on write. Now we're getting somewhere. Well, I went on Amazon to order the, the Samsung SSD and they had overnight delivery and it was delivered sometime between four and eight this morning. So that's how I got that at the last minute. So that's a new thing with Amazon now. Apparently they deliver overnight. Fantastic. Well, in this heat, probably a good thing. The Crucial list for a hundred bucks and I got it up for 83. I'll have a link down below. That's not the price you might get, but that's the price when I ordered it. The Samsung has a list of 290, but I got it off Amazon for 159. So it was almost twice as expensive, but again, it's also almost twice as fast. And then the good part for me is when I'm done, I'm predicting that the slow SSD will be in the cheap enclosure where the speed limit isn't a problem. And then I will determine which of these two enclosures, the Acasis or the Orico, will be better for these drives and I'll get all the speeds. 
I'm going to unbox these all, and then I'm going to go away for a while while I test. I'm going to put every SSD, I'm going to get the native speed on my motherboard in my PC. Then I'm going to test all three of them in each of the three enclosures and see what the speeds I get on my PC through USB-C, on my MacBook Air with Thunderbolt 3. And we'll see which is the faster. They're going to migrate to their appropriate enclosure. Well, one of the things I'm buying this for is I want to test out editing with DaVinci Resolve on the MacBook Air. And for that, I'm going to need a faster and large, well, basically a larger device so I can hold all the video files. So that's my story. Yeah, it's kind of a convoluted story. But what, what y'all get instead of an un one unboxing and one setup is you're going to get multiple unboxings and testing three SSDs in three different enclosures. Well, let's get to the unboxings. Now, first, I'm going to show you the unboxing of the Orico, which I already filmed a few days ago. I'll show that now. Flashback. Well, let's see what it looks like. Ooh, not a lot to it. You have the little enclosure, which has a little tiny screw on it. Now, I think that's one of the reasons people like the Acasis is it doesn't require screws. It just pops off. But of course, one of the videos said, well, maybe it could just pop off while you're using it. And you get a little USB-C to USB-A cable or to Thunderbolt cable. Oh, wait. No, it's more than that. Look, it's a USB-C to USB-C. But if you don't have USB-C, you just plug this little adapter on and it's USB-A. And it comes with the little screwdriver you need to open up the case. And it comes with a little thermal pad and cover. One of the things I learned from watching videos is that the thermal pads that come with these things tend not to be quite thick enough. I bought these thermal pads. It was 10 bucks, two one millimeters, two one and a half millimeters. It may be the acasis that needs the extra thermal. Well, we're about to see. Let's, let's open it up. This is actually not a bad little screwdriver you get with it. So that's a, that's a little bonus. I brought my iFixit case up, but apparently I'm not going to need it. So I'm going to try the thermal pad that came with, because it just happens to be exactly the right size. And if I use these, I'm going to be doing some cutting. It's important to make sure you're covering the controller, which is actually the thing that needs the thermal protection. If the little NAND chips get hot, it's kind of no big deal. But the controller, that's where you'll get your thermal thermal throttling. Easy for me to say. Well, actually, let's go ahead and put this in here first. It doesn't come with the hold down screw. I guess it figures you have one, but of course I don't. Okay, that is touching. That metal is touching that metal, which is what you want. So I bought these all the thermal, well, it's $10, but apparently it's the Acasis one that, that does the thermal pads aren't quite thick enough, but this one seems to be just fine. Let's fire it up. I've downloaded the DaVinci Resolve disk speed test, and I'm running it right now on the internal drive that comes came with and it looks like we got about 3,000 3, megabytes per second right and 2800 read which is decent well let's try this cute little cable well, let's plug it in oh i can't run speed test because apparently it's it's read only probably because it's a windows it's formatted for windows by the magic of video, I'll be right back. Flashback. Okay, so that was the Arico unboxing. Now I'm going to unbox the Acasis, which should be extremely similar. Now the difference between the Acasis and the Arico enclosures is the Arico has a screw, but of course they give you a little screwdriver, which I thought was nice. This one just pops open. So much for my thought that it will just fly open. There we go. So you, put, you push that down, and then this pops off, and there you have your enclosure. Also in the box is USB-C to, well, actually, this is a Thunderbolt. See, it even has a little Thunderbolt on it. This is a Thunderbolt 3 cable. We have some screws for attaching the, uh, the drive, and then we have this, uh, we have thermal pads. Oh, and a, little, and a little user manual. The reviews of the Acasis said that you might want to buy some additional thermal pads because the ones included, they're not thick enough to touch the top, which is aluminum, which is where you, really where you want the heat to go. Now on the Arico, the, the included heating pad and, and heat sink, 
gave me enough. It was touching the top top without any additional thermal pads, and it got hot. And it's only 1800 reads and writes. So I did buy the additional thermal pads. So just to show you how it's done, I'm going to stick that in there. These little standoffs have the little rubber and they just pop right in. Now, if I was gonna leave this in here long-term, I would then put down at least one or two of these thermal pads. I'd cut those to fit. So I'd get it thick enough where it's touching the roof here but this is I'm just gonna test this real quick okay that's not going anywhere now I have the crucial in there I have the Intel in the Orico but wait there's another Orico this is the basically the dumb enclosure that does not include all the logic elements you notice there were little motherboards little 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 boards in there now with the $20 enclosure you don't get the free screwdriver. Now it turns out I already have a thermal pad on the Intel from, from it being in the other one. When I finalize who's where, I will put some additional thermal padding in here. Oh, and I guess while I'm here, and we will put the Samsung into the Orico. Now what I have to do is I have to go take these three SSDs and these three enclosures, and then I'm gonna go test them in every possible combination. And then I will come back up here and tell you all the results. A lot of boring math later. And I'm back. That took a while. Well, I had to test all three SSDs and all three enclosures on both the Mac and the PC. That wasn't speedy. Here are my findings. The cheap enclosure works but it's slow because it's 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 not Thunderbolt. This is only uh, USB. I'll put these numbers up on the screen. But with the cheap Intel drive, which is now living in here because it's the only one that this makes sense for, the rated speed is 1800 read-write megabytes per second. Installed onto my motherboard, it gives me 1700 and something, so it's close. But when you put, start putting it into these enclosures, it didn't matter which enclosure out of the three I used, the fastest one, well, none of them were fast. On the PC, it got re relatively dreadful. Actually, the performance was about the same on the PC and the MacBook Air because it's, the limit is now the USB speed. But the, fast, the best performance I got out of this on both the Mac and the PC was 900 to 925 megabytes per second read and about seven high 700s for writes. Not bad. And remember, this was the free SSD that had come out of an old PC. And this is the $20 enclosure. So if you've got a slow like Gen 3 M.2 SSD lying around, this 20 buck enclosure makes it worth something again. Again, it's not as fast as it would be on a motherboard, but why would you put this on a motherboard? These other ones are so much faster. When I move up to the Crucial, which is now living in the Orico 120 something dollar case. By the way, it turns out, I was, I was just reviewing my purchases. While the a cases was more expensive, it had a coupon, so it actually ended up being cheaper. So they're, Figure about $100 to $130 for either one of these, and their performance is virtually identical. The uh, Crucial, on the cheap enclosure, both the Crucial and the Samsung, you're lucky to get 700 to 900 reads and writes. But with this enclosure, the drive is rated for 3,500 reads and writes, on my motherboard, it got between 25 to 2,800 reads and writes. But in this enclosure, in, in, actually in both enclosures, it got about 2,000. And again, I'll have the numbers up here. It was slightly faster in this one than in the Acasis, so I left it in here. This is where things get a little ugly. The expensive drive, the Samsung 990 Pro, which is rated for 7,400 uh, reads and 6,900 megabytes per second writes. On my motherboard, it only got around 5,200. So 
And I, I've just seen this with other stamps that they say it's 7,000, but you don't get 7,000. So I don't, I don't know what their story is, but they lie. But in both of these enclosures, the Samsung got about 2,500 reads and writes. Again, I'll have the, I'll put the numbers next to my head. What have we learned? What we've learned is the best SSD is a free SSD. So if you have an M2 NVMe SSD lying around, like when you upgraded, like I did when I upgraded to a four terabyte from a two terabyte, that's where this one came from. You're not gonna break a thousand megabytes per second with any drive in this enclosure. This is two terabytes of archive storage. I should note that the internal SSD on my MacBook Air, which is a one terabyte, it gets 3000 megabytes per second reads and 2800 megabytes per second writes. So even these guys are slower than that. The best they do, they, they top out around 25, 2600, but they're way cheaper. Again, to get that, this is four terabytes. If I upgraded to a four terabyte internal, that would be another $400. Well, these are about, with the drives, these are about 300 to $400 a piece. Oh, maybe it would have been a better deal. This is where the results get disappointing. Like if you're like me and want to move files back and forth between a PC and your MacBook Air, the PC, I don't have a Thunderbolt card, which by the way, I may get one now because these are so much faster on Thunderbolt, T around 2,500 megabytes per second on Thunderbolt. When plugged into USB-C or even you know, high-speed USB on a PC, they can't break a thousand. So they're over two and a half times as fast over Thunderbolt on the MacBook Air as they are onto the PC. But for using these for storage disks on my MacBook Air, we have a winner. Almost as fast as the internal drive and cheaper, especially again, if you don't overbuy. The, the Samsung was a mistake because it was like $140. The uh, Crucial was under $100. And then with the case, so this is a little over $200. If you're looking to buy an M.2 NVMe SSD to use as an external drive for a Mac or a MacBook Pro or a MacBook Air, see the video up here. You don't need anything like 3000 megabytes per second read write is you're not gonna get that. Get a Gen 3, the Gen 3s are cheaper. And if you get a, a slow enough Gen 3, you can use this little case and get close to a thousand. So that is my advice. I'm keeping all three. I now have six terabytes of external storage for my MacBook Air. So it's kind of a win-win-win for me. Plus I discovered that Amazon will deliver overnight sometimes. That's an even better win. Just under a thousand megabytes per second. And these two guys will do about 2,500 or so megabytes per second on Thunderbolt. But again, under a thousand on USB. Thunderbolt wins, which of course, that's why Mac uses it, right? I will not do a review of the whatever Thunderbolt card I end up buying for my PC, but I may buy one eventually if I end up moving a lot of files back and forth, but I don't know yet. That's it for today. Thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye.